Welcome to Oxygen Not Included. My name is Nilaus. Welcome to Oxygen Not Included. My name is Nilaus. So this is a tutorial of a build that you absolutely must have in your base if you want to breach into the mid game of the base. It doesn't have to look like this, but this one is mine and I like it very much. So what does it do? It is, it is allowing you to do the most important things to enter the mid game. It's allowing you to do heat neutral metal refining as well as have a cooling loop for whatever industrial machinery you have around the base that will uh, that will cause a lot of heat so you need to be able to manage your heat and you need to be able to make more more metals refined metals without actually heating up the entire base and that's what this thing does now these designs that i make they are always fitting into a grid it looks like this 16 16 tiles and then four height. So that means it's easy to fit into your base if you build these city blocks that I'm always doing. I'm gonna explain the whole thing because just uh, just letting you know what uh, what each of those are. Uh, but this tutorial will actually not only focus on the actual design, but also focus on how to build it with dupes in a real game because I feel that a lot of tutorials are very hypothetical with just a creative build. And it's if you wanna build them yourself, it gets really difficult to figure out how you would actually build it with dupes um, so especially like these closed off rooms and vacuums and all that stuff so let's um let's also focus on that and then fast forward through those parts regarding materials there are not that many materials that are absolutely must have there's one thing and this is that you must have 1200 steel for the aqua tuner. you must have 400 plastic for the two steam turbines so those are the things that you have to find and once you find those and get those then you can build this one which will automate and run for the entirety of the of your uh, of your base and you can build more of these if you feel like it so what does it do and uh, let's uh, just briefly explain sort of in high level what it does as we uh, pro before we progress into actually trying to build this thing what it does is it has a loop the, therm it, the whole core of this is this thermal aqua tuna which is pretty damn magical in the Let's just get this one up and running just so it looks nicer. There we go. Um, it, what the aqua tuna does, very simply, it's, it takes liquids in. And the liquid it takes in is going to be cold, cooled down by 14 degrees. So it comes out here, 14 degrees colder than it came in. And what that means is that all the heat that takes extracts out of the liquid going through will be dissipated in the surroundings. So if you take a material such as water, that has high uh, specific heat capacity, then the 40 degrees temperature decrease is actually quite a lot of heat that gets, uh, gets output in here. And that heat becomes steam. The steam goes into the steam turbines. The steam turbines will operate. They're run currently running at 100% capacity because we are just exactly at the 200 mark where I'd want to be. The 200 mark is where steam turbines are the most efficient. And what it does is it dissipates here, the steam gets in, produces power, power to fuel this, to feed this one, the thermal aqua tuner, and also the doors. But the most important part of the steam engine is actually not the power, it's the fact that it takes 200 degree hot steam in and outputs 95 degree hot water out. The 95 de so that means it deletes 100 degrees of, uh, of heat. Uh, currently, some of it gets dissipated in the surroundings as I was just reheat radiating from this one, but that needs to be managed and can easily be managed by the aqua tuna itself. So that means this is very much heat neutral, but not only that, so the lower part here is a cooling loop that goes out here. This cooling loop interacts with the two surrounding pools of water where we have other closed loop for cooling and that goes out into the base. So for example, you can see here, it comes out as in as 29 degrees and goes out as 20 degrees. So it, this little loop here actually takes out nine degrees of, of heat and I can then set control each of these locations. So one can be zero degrees and one can be 20 degrees, depending, for example, on what you want to get in for. That's why I build it like this, so that you can have actually managed two different, two different temperatures. The way it works is by closing this one. Uh, when it's open, there's a vacuum and therefore no heat will be dissipating between these two uh, metal tiles. And while it's the door, the steel door is closed, steel door, or it could be an aluminum ore, then it, uh, the heat will flow through and they will equalize in temperature. I mentioned 2000, uh, 1200 steel, but you also really should be getting some aluminium. Aluminium has the best uh, thermal conductivity for all of the materials you have readily available. So try to get aluminium. 
in here for the metal tiles and also for the aluminium or for the door is also great. So let's uh, let's dive into the actual build of this. If you are enjoying these kind of, of tutorials and my let's plays, then be sure to hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below if you have some ideas, suggestions for future episodes. And of course, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, then uh, I hope that I can earn your subscription with videos like this. Let's dive in. So here we have a blank location and what I'm going to do is I am going to start building, having the dupes actually build all the stuff we can build. Uh, okay, well, also stuff that we shouldn't build, I guess. And once that's done, because you can't build the whole thing, I need three blocks, one, two, three. That should be enough for uh, our design and I can build this out here, but I can't build, I can't build the whole thing. That one can, can't build, and I can build out here, and I can build here, there. And then we get to the door, and you can make it out of steel, or you could make it out of aluminium ore. I'm just gonna make it out of aluminium ore because it's cheaper. And then we need some metal tiles. These need, uh, they need to be made out of aluminium. Again, I can't make it all the way up, but I can make this part. Then we're going to build the rest of the machinery. We have over on the utility side, we have the aqua tuner, which you absolutely must do in steel. Over here with the power, we get the two steam turbines. They don't need to be built out on anything fancy. Rotate the other one like that. And then we get some batteries. The batteries will help us manage our, uh, our power consumption for the rest of the network and a power shut off so that if it's self-sufficient, I won't be drawing power from the network. And on top of that, we are also going to get one liquid on here and also a metal refinery there. Right, and as I build this, I'm gonna start by not building it anyway because I need to be able to fill in water here and that's actually that one, that one, these two to be honest, and that one, yes. Which means that one actually has to be coming out and I need these here. So why do I do this? Well, because I actually need to make sure that I can get water into this location. This is gonna take a long time to fill this up with water. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take, this is the stuff that we can build immediately. So let's start building it and zoom forward in time. So here we are, we've now built all the stuff that we can do and we're just gonna let the dupes clean it out. What we're going to do now is we're going to start pouring in the water. This is going to be polluted water. The polluted water we ha has a larger, um, what can we call it? Yeah. Label out bottling there, copy for all of these. Yes, uh, it has a larger range so it can go down to minus 20 without freezing. So that's really nice. What we want to do now is actually start working on the cooling loop. So that's going to be the most important part. Let's build the cooling loop. So the way it works is we have some here. This is uh, insulated tiles because this is the hot room and we don't want to get to have the, wa the water in the cooling loop interact with the heat in this room. So we go in here and it comes out of this and it goes here. So from there, it'll go in and I just use iron. You can use something better if you want, but I have always abundant iron. So I'm just going to make iron there, that one and there. So that's a cooling loop that covers as much as possible. It'll go up here and then we need it to cool. Let's add that one. And from up here, I'm going to jump over as well. That's just where we need to go right now. That will go here and I put one tile in there and then I'll have here a loop so like this and here so this cooling loop will go all the way around the reason why I do this specifically oops that one was not correct there it's kind of important to do this here and that one 
let's make sure this one gets deleted. You have to build these things in more or less a specific order. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So this cooling loop goes in here, cools this area, goes around, cools the refinery with very hot petroleum, goes up here, cools the batteries, cools the steam engines, and then loops back. All that can, uh, and then it gets 14 degrees lower. But what if it, it is actually close to the freezing point or close to my target temperature? Then I don't want it to go through the aqua tuna. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a sensor here. <clears throat> how did how did I build that one? Well, okay, I know how I built it, but I did not want to build it. And this one is uh, very much a high-level deconstruct because it's kind of in the way of what we want to build. Automatic, and there's plumbing, and it's a liquid tuner, and it goes here. So this liquid tuner will identify what the temperature is and disable this one. And if it's disabled, then it needs to get somewhere else. So it goes loop around and jump over. And that's going to go here. So all that done. Now we have the cooling loop that also has a bypass, meaning that it will continue to flow no matter if it goes in here or not. We are also going to get different cooling flows. This is for dissipating the heat into the surrounding area. That one, this is simply the pattern that has the most surface in there and I'm going to take that's just uh, heat insulated pipes because we don't want to dissipate heat until we actually well until we're ready for it what we can now do is what we do to do here in order to be able to close off the middle room which is what we really like we're going to need a few more things and that will be power I'm just going to take iron here it's very important to get that on that one Get that up here and connect all of this there. So that's the power lines. Very, very simple. We'll get a bit more into detail with how that's going to work, but we don't want to power anything right now. What we also need to do is we need to do the automation down here. And what that automation will consist of. Okay, we have the start of a cycle, I guess. Yep. Start of a cycle latency. When you're at 500 cycles in, it takes a while. I'm going to take it a sensor and a sensor here. This one will determine whether the door opens or not. And they will just be in here. They can set separately. That's why I'm doing it like this. And once it's done, I will also need to make sure that the heat dissipates as much as possible. You can take here. We can take it out of pretty much anything you want. If you have aluminum, then sure. Aluminum uh, uh, or I can make it a diamond. I think aluminum is... is cheaper in most cases so we'll build these temperature plates they take 800 each so it's kind of pricey we can also just make them up here if you want to uh, well i do want to so that's why you build them up here and again we just up the priority on everything just to keep things going once we have that done we can actually start closing off the middle and what these are now closed and i'm just gonna make it oh hold on i'm gonna make it wins below 2000 yes copy there yeah so I want these to be open otherwise they can't get into the middle ones and I'm just also going to sweep this up copy settings to that one so now what do we have we have uh, all of the parts for the lower part here and what we then have is uh, is getting up here and we just have them coming in with water you can also drag a line through but I don't really like that uh, so the next loop we want to do, we've done some of these loops. We also need to do the loop for the petroleum. So the petroleum will start by coming out. It'll actually come out from this tile. That's just because I know it. And it'll go here. Then it goes into the hot room. And this is where I want the petroleum, the very hot petroleum comes in. I want that to go in here and dissipate. Exchange heat with the steam room and basically get rid of as much steam as possible before going out again uh, because that will help feed the steam turbines and delete the heat and that goes back into this box the reason why I have this box is because um, if you just only use the metal refinery sometimes it gets stuck because it has different pools of water inside and let me just get these two higher priorities so we can actually load it off and I'm gonna lower these two priorities and yeah, so that's the cooling loop over here. 
I'd really like these two to get in here. I wonder if I don't have enough aluminium. That if that's the why. That's why. Let me just check. Uh, I do have enough aluminium, I think. Okay, and uh, the next thing is actually some automation. So let's go to the automation overlay. We need to control this, but there's actually a, another thing that can go wrong here. And that's if this room, because of, for example, refining steel or gold, it can get really hot and it can actually melt the thermal aqua tuner. So we want to make another heat sensor in here that just checks that we don't have it, things being too hot. And then to say if it gets too hot, then it disables the aqua tuner and the metal refinery. So I will now say that both of these two must be true. I'm going to set an end gate right there that just happens to be room for it just what a coincidence and i'm going to take my aqua tuner as an input i'm going to take the uh, liquid what is it called third liquid pipe thermo sensor as input and i will then drag that's another day gone i'll drag it over here and then that uh, those two conditions must be true the temperature and the water must be higher than maybe zero degrees so it doesn't freeze in the pipes and this one must be less than maybe 220 degrees. But I'm also going to drag this one over because I need this to be hooked up to the metal refinery so that it becomes, if this becomes too hot here, turn off the metal refinery. This one should be green when it is less than 225 degrees. I think that's a good number. This one should be green when it is above zero degrees. Now nothing passes through, so there's nothing there. Uh, we have built the temp shift plates in the middle so we can continue to make the these two and this is kind of risky so let's not do that and uh, what we can do is actually make yeah let's get these two done first so i don't actually lock them in once this is done i can lock it off from the sides and you can see that the, there's a lot of water coming in here while that is getting done they will of course get soggy feet or get soaping wet but I, I don't really care about that. This one is now done, done, great. And this one is getting in here. Yeah. So now we can make one, two, three, four. And again, also make those hotter. And now we will not have any reason to get in here ever again. I hope. There's one more automation we need to do. And that is up here. We need to make sure that this one, the shut off, that one, uh, the shut off, is hooked up to the battery so that when the battery is let's say 80 percent it shuts off the connection to the network and then it turns it on the connection to the network uh, the global electricity network when it is at 20 degrees that should be good so i will now take this part uh, we'll get this wire and i'm bringing it in here and i've just made a separate split for this one And we'll just up the priorities again. Oh, they're already high priority. Now this one is already done. So I can close these two off and I can also close this one off. Uh, everything seems to be built in priority nine, I guess. Hmm, okay. And as that's done, we can now ability to close off this uh, area. And once that's done, we can actually just wait for the water to fill up as uh, as that's kind of the next thing we want to do. And here we are. So one of the reasons why I opened up two here is because if I did not, there would always be an air bubble in here. Right now, there will be, <clears throat> there should be no air bubbles. How is this actually forming an air bubble in there? That's, that's just ridiculous. Okay, it is actually able to squeeze out that air bubble. And at this point, we can actually just take these out. As they go out, then I will be, these two can now be just deconstructed nothing in here and that one nothing in there great also that one uh, i'd actually like this to be getting and this one can now be deconstructed and deconstructed same with these two deconstructed this one deconstructed the reason why I, I take those out first i'm going to let this one see if it it will push this one out it did actually successfully push it out there and i think it should be able to push it out the other side as well as long as I have all those open. That means now we can also close this and close this and close this. I'm gonna let to let it try and see if we can do it. So the next thing we want to do while we're doing all of this is actually over here, we're gonna do a water lock because we need to empty this space out completely. The reason why I want to empty this space out, I'm actually going to close it off here. 
uh, is because I want a vacuum. Currently, what we have is gas. We have a lot of oxygen, polluted oxygen, and that is really unfortunate to have those polluted oxygen in here because that will actually form uh, up here, preventing the steam from going smoothly into the steam turbines. So let's try to avoid that. What I'm, that means I unfortunately need to make uh, a liquid lock here, and that kind of doesn't look great. There, that's the liquid lock. And we're gonna just get some things around it. There we go. And the liquid lock will be that one, that one. That should be enough liquid lock for us. Ah, it works. So I did expect this to work, so that's good. This one will be deconstructed and that one deconstructed there. And close off this area as well. This liquid lock is going to just take normal water. Very important that it's normal water, high priority and allow out the bottle. So it just forms an airlock here. What I'm gonna build here is I'm going to vacuum this space out. So we need a bit of a gas pump. I'm gonna put the gas pump here. Uh, actually, I can put it pretty much wherever I want. So I'm gonna put it right there and just get it up and a high level pressure thing. All of this is going to be temporary and I'm gonna take it out anyway. So that is all pretty much inconsequential. What we've done now is we have actually an, a water lock, an airlock here. This airlock is good enough for keeping the uh, keeping the gas in here, but it's not good enough if I have steam pressure in here. So I'm gonna vacuum this out, and while vacuuming this out, I'm also gonna get some water inbound here because we're also gonna get water in here to turn into steam, and I might as well fill up the lower level here with water so that it becomes less tiles to make a vacuum at. And that one is here. I'm okay, it's, it's getting there. And at this point, we can now reestablish our metal refinery that we did not have earlier. So let's put the refinery in. And that goes in right there. And this one will not be on the same power line as the other. So I'm just going to make it in another power line that I hope can carry it. And potential load. That's not a problem, right? That's not a problem. Not at all. This one is working diligently on trying to make a, a couple of settings. That one. This one's really trying to empty out the gas, which is super difficult and takes forever. This one just needs to make enough for a water lock. What do we have here? 700. So it's not actually enough to fill up. I'd like to fill this one up so that if I have to go in and service it while there's steam in here, uh, the steam will not boil the water because it's just a low amount of water. If there's low amount of water, it will boil. But uh, if I put more in here, this will also help by moving, by preventing the lower level here from being uh, being any gas in. So there's less tiles to be making a vacuum out of. At this point, we have all these running. What we don't have is actually the liquid in. So while working on having, uh, working on this one, I think we'll put in the water into the cooling loop just because. And that's a good thing. So what I've done is I've prepared two lines, one with petroleum going into this loop, cooling loop for the refinery and one for polluted water going into the cooling loop for the aqua tuna. It's very important that you don't mix those up because uh, the water and coming, you can't use water in the refinery easily because it puts so much water in that or so much heat in that is very likely that you will actually boil the water in the pipes and that's a bad thing i'm always bridging these in using using a bridge onto a network because that means it doesn't overfill the network and what the one thing i'm missing is actually a pipe from some liquid and in there so we are going to monitor this one going in and once i uh, once this one is full then i'm actually just going to continue to deconstruct it once we filled up this uh, liquid network, and that's the case right now. So I can deconstruct it, no more putting any water in here. This will already starting to cool down, but it will not start, well, it will actually start heating. That's um, something I'd like to avoid, actually. This one should then be when it is, only when it's above 200 degrees, because I don't actually want 
the aqua tuna to start heating up the water and turning it into steam. If some of this flashes into steam just now, then I'm going to start making the vacuum pump actually take out steam, plus the dupes coming into a little water, they're going to be scalded, and that's just not a great idea. I am going to just deconstruct this one. How much water do we have in here? This one has 800, and I have put a bit in here. Great. Deconstruct it. And that should be enough. Yeah. There is not really any hard and fast rule about how much one what how much liquid you want here how much petroleum the all of the petroleum or all of the liquid inside of container will always equal out so when it equals out it, if you have more then it equals out and but it's also very much dip, more difficult to cool down how much water do we have we have 100 kilos yeah that's uh, that's probably enough we'll just wait for this one to get done and then we'll deconstruct it done and done so it's deconstructed and then we need to wait for this one to be making a vacuum as we've done everything else now is done what we need to do good i will clean that up and now we just play the waiting game until we have a vacuum in here and that one should also pretty much be stopped right now because it's already overfilling a lot there deconstruct perfect but this is a very big water lock maybe too big but it's a uh, it's very resistant if I need to do some kind of service on it because there is a chance that I forgot something. One thing we don't have now is the connection there, which we will get. As I've missed, we can actually close out this one and, well, I think it's safer to close this one out first. We don't care about what you have in here, but if, as long as it's not a vacuum, then it's fine. Anything that conducts, you don't really need anything particular in here. so. Uh, I have a high oxygen pressure. I'm just going to leave it like that because it's not important in this case. So I'm going to do these. So while well, these are being done, there, build the top one, and I can then build these two. So these are going to be closed off because we have no business going in there anymore. And we have a pipe here. This pipe, I don't want the radiant pipe to actually dissipate heat to the entire base, but only enough to cool this down. That one's done. And we now have a vacuum that is actually fa Okay, we're gonna have to wait until this vacuum dis disappears. Perfect. Now we deconstruct this and we deconstruct this and we deconstruct this part. Oops. That was a mistake. It's a small mistake. I'll open this one up again. Didn't really do anything. And that one also deconstruct. Should have brought it out here so I didn't have to do anything else. Let's see. Power lines are good. These pipes are good. And I'm going to need to make sure that this one gets deleted. All that gets deleted once it's done. I will sweep in here. Sweeping, not the most important thing. But, you know, it's for me, it's, it's important not to look at things on the ground if I can at all avoid it. So, that one and here. Sweep that out. Close it off. Now let the steam be in here in peace and quiet. I can now allow this one. I'm going to set it to zero degrees and I'm going to allow this one to start heating up because that's where what the whole thing we've been waiting for is for the steam to actually uh, get started, get it on. The water turned to steam. Look at the temperature. Everything here is very temperate. I'm going to let it run for a while once we have the whole thing up and running. Uh, so basically what you can see is there's a kind of a meticulous way that you have to do these kind of things in order to uh, in order to build this what i'd actually recommend doing here and is actually getting a tiny little light up here you could build it right there because that will make the production on this one faster cool I can now close this off, and at that point we are completely done. You can take this out, but I'm, I like to leave it in just for a while, because uh, there's just a chance that you need to, need to uh, service this area. But we know that we've done it perfectly, so we can actually do this. I'm going to set this. This one, I'd like to have it as when it is below. It's in the green signal. Green signal when it is above 20 degrees so what this means is that if this one is there right if it is below the temperature at 20 degrees then this one is cool enough and therefore there's no 
connection, I'm going to set the other one to below, I don't know, 10 degrees so that you can see that there's a difference. They're now currently 18 degrees and I have one, one engaged and one disengaged and we'll see how it works uh, as we move forward. And now we basically just uh, let it run for a while and uh, just let the temperature flash into steam. They were at 73 degrees and the temperature here already is starting to go down. It's like 13 degrees. And gradually this comes in out of zero degrees, but once it's gone through the hole here, it's actually all the way up to 12 degrees, which then goes back and comes back in here as 13 degrees. So it needs to cool down this reservoir quite a bit more whilst heating this one up. And now the water in here is actually reaching 100 degrees. It changes at 102 degrees. We can look at this and see that it flashes. You can see that now there are drops because it flashes into steam and then hits some of the machinery in here that and then cools it down immediately. But it is starting to transfer into steam and we'll see that it transfers into steam. You can see here there's a bit of steam. The light blue is the steam forming. Not a lot of steam, but still some steam getting in there. And once the start flashes, there we go. Now it's all over the place. So we have steam in all of these. And you can see how quickly it actually increases the pressure here. We now have 18 kilos, 24, 25 kilos of steam. And we've pretty much converted everything here to steam. These ones, the steam turbines, they have registered now that they are getting steam in. But the steam is too cold. It needs to be 125 degrees before it will even start running here. So now we've turned everything, almost almost everything into steam. Once that's being turned into steam, the beep, 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 it's just those uh, thing here. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so now everything is turned into steam and we can look at the temperature. This has become a nice hot room, uh, 100 degrees. It needs to be go to 125, ideally somewhere in the high hundreds. Uh, no, sorry, high 100, I guess. And what we have down here is this room here is becoming quite cold. What is it at? It's 11 degrees. And this one over here is now starting to lower as well, while this one remains constant at, at well, 18 degrees. So the water here is 18 degrees. That's where it was when we started because there's no heat transfer through the vacuum in here. There is a heat transfer through, through the aluminum door. And that means you can see here the temperature here is 11.4. And this here is 11.8. This is 13. Point one and then it's 14.5 and then it goes in here and becomes 15.1 so there's a kind of a gradient here and over time because i want this one to go down to zero while this one goes closer to our target temperature we don't want to see the steam flashing here and it's just keep going up up and up and up and so let's wait for the steam engines to start flashing here we go, the steam turbines are just starting up and until this point we have not deleted any heat. We have simply extracted heat from this one, this area and this area and put it into this room. But only now do we start deleting heat by actually uh, going through the steam turbines and you can see the water coming out is 95 degrees going back in here and flashing to steam. The temperature here, as long as you are just running the aqua tuner, cooling this will not really get very high. It'll go like that 25 and it'll be cold cool down and it'll be pretty much at this point that means the steam turbines are not particularly effective you can see that the current wattage is only 250 plus 250 so that's 500 they produce that's not even enough to run the thermo aqua tuner so more is needed if we want to so what i want to do now is i want to actually uh, start up the metal refinery so we can see that now this is reaching a pretty much a stable situation this is just going to continue to run until this area here is cold enough and this is cold enough and then it'll just be stuck and then it'll only run to sort of maintain the temperatures of course you would have a pump uh, have a flow in here that would leach the heat from this cold room uh, but we don't have that right now and uh, we have that another setup here we can see the temperature here is coming out now it's minus six degrees which is perfectly fine for polluted water uh, i just don't want it to be less than that so what we do now is uh, starts up the metal refinery. I'm just gonna make some iron. Uh, I do have 41 kilos, so we gotta set some, make some iron here. Uh, insufficient iron ore. Seriously? Didn't it say iron ore? Ah, okay, let's do something else instead of iron ore then. Let's do copper. Copper is, uh, also takes a lot of heat, so let's do some copper. And then see the impact here. Waiting for materials, it now has, it's in, the petroleum is 24.6 degrees. 
And is this a high priority? Nah, we just need to make sure that it is high priority. In the meantime, we're just going to look here. This is hovering around the 125 because it goes up about 20, 125 and then it gets cooled down and then it'll find that balance around the 125 degrees, which is a nice moderate temperature. But now we're getting here and what we want to see, you can see that as soon as we start consuming, well, not consuming, using the petroleum at there. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I want to see just the temperature coming out. It's coming out at 70 degrees. It's not super hot, but... Um, it goes in here and at this point it's actually warming up you can see here it comes in as 70 degrees comes back out at 122 which seems a bit silly that i'm actually going in here and leaching heat but don't worry at some point after a few cycles the petroleum coming in will be a couple of hundred degrees and already now well it's still using all the low temperature what you can then see is this here liquid reservoir is storing can i see the content of the liquid reservoir yeah here this will gradually increase in temperature as it goes through several times. And we're going to take a look at this. This is starting to increase in temperature going out, but it's still being heated up by the room and not the other way around. This here is leaking some heat, but it's not, actually not so bad. We can see even that despite that it's working made out of copper ore, you would expect it to be uh, expected to be leaking a lot of heat but the actual liquid reservoir is 9.2 degrees even though it is storing 118 degree hot petroleum 119 so right now the stuff that goes into this one is starting to be quite hot uh, this one is going in it's coming in at 120 degrees so we should see that the parts coming out here is now 134 and as they come in here at 134 they will not actually they will actually start dissipating heat from the petroleum to the steam, which is how I want it to be. And that will gradually increase the temperature of this room, make the steam turbine more efficient, thereby producing more power and letting the, uh, sort of refunding more of the power for, uh, for the aqua tuna. Let's see this one coming out. Now it's coming out at 157 degrees. If this ever gets to a situation where it's too hot, then the whole thing will shut off. Uh, the metal refinery will shut off uh, this one here it's only registering 130 degrees because the temperature in here is only 130 degrees so while we let uh, this run just for a bit and monitor the temperature change let me just uh, extend a big thank you to all the patron supporters who are supporting the channel and the work i do here it is because of the patron supporters that i am con that i am able to be uh, to be a full-time content creator for mainly factory but now also more for oxygen not included so thank you very much for anyone who is supporting the channel i really appreciate that very very much if anyone wants to support there's a link in the description below now at this point we should see that uh, the temperature is now 171 coming in and now we are going to start to see this this is 170 coming in and then it still goes out at 137 so it's still coming out hotter than it than uh, then the storage here which is going to happen until it equalizes at a somewhat higher temperature but this now means that we are the average temperature in here is now also increasing it's going up to 140 and these become more efficient as they go up here producing well right now it's only 700 watts of power that this is producing but if we look at this one we are now getting this down to minus uh, not minus but to 5.5 degrees and over here we are at monitor this one is monitoring at 11 but it's actually getting 10.7 degrees 10.6 and it is going down it is declining or decreasing by this decrease when it hits less than 10 degrees it'll actually switch off and then be happy and then the, all the rest of the heat or the coldness will be in this will be stuck in here this will continue to run they will not overheat it will not break it will not uh, break the wires it uh, will just continue to work for the rest of the game no maintenance whatsoever the only thing you need to do is just getting into the metal refinery once in a while and spin that spin that wheel to make more and more coming out here now it's getting up to 186 degrees and i'm just going to monitor this one while it goes down to 10.1 and we should see this one open very soon monitor 10.1 and when it goes to yeah, it's 10.0 and then it goes to 10 9.9 .9. when it goes to 9.9 .9, this opens and there's there we go perfect you can see how quickly it actually cools down now 
and uh, now this one will stay at 10 degrees if we start adding more heat by having this loop filling up then it'll open and close the door to adjust the temperature and that's how you want you fix it you can always change these temperatures to whatever you want you can change this one to where you want it i'd set it to zero degrees because that makes this room nice and cold and there you have it that is the build uh, unfortunately i can't provide you blueprints as i do in factorio but uh, you can take a screenshot of this and you can i'll actually go to a different overlay so if you wanted to take screenshots then uh, you can do that so this is the building overlay the second most important one is the fluid overlay which is what you see here and uh, then we have the power overlay that's also pretty simple and then the automation overlay which is not too complicated either and those are all of the overlays that we have in here so with that Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below if you have interesting ideas, comments for new tutorials, that kind of thing. And of course, if I have, if you have enjoyed it and you're still awake, then uh, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay effective.